Hola mi gente, welcome back to my channel and happy new year. Thanks for hanging out with me today as we dive into a kind of crazy story of how I met a favorite author and I didn't even know it yet. I'm gonna talk about the amazing, amazing books. They both die at the end and the first to die at the end. Get your tissues ready because this one just made me sob like crazy. I had actually seen They Both Die at the End circulating on Bookstagram. I heard really good things about it, but I didn't really know what it was fully about. Someone did briefly mention to me that in this book, both characters are called by this mysterious app and they're told they're gonna die by the end of that day. Citizens all over the country are gathered both in support and protest of the highly controversial service that many believe to be fake. Whether you believe in death cast or not, we recommend you have your phones handy. Calls are about to start. I didn't really know much beyond that. I knew I would eventually pick it up. It wasn't at the top of my radar or the top of my TBR. Later on, I saw that Aiden Thomas, the author of Cemetery Boys and the Sunbearer Trials, was gonna come to my city and interview Adam Silvera for his prequel, The First to Die at the End. And this came out in 2022, so just last year. Just exposing myself a little bit here, I fully went to this event to meet Aiden. Again, I'm not really great at keeping up with releases so I had no idea they had just finished their tour for the Sunbearer Trials like not a month or two before the prequel for the first to die at the end came out when I saw Aiden was gonna come pretty soon I had to go see them I had just finished reading the Cemetery Boys and really wanted to hear from Aiden I honestly thought the headline Adam Silvera in conversation with Aiden Thomas meant that this event was for both of them it wasn't until I got there and I really saw the big they both die at the end poster and all of that that I realized it was more of an Adam Silvera event than both of them together with an emphasis on his book. Again, I saw the books there, but I didn't pick them up because I don't like buying books if I don't intend to read them pretty soon. I get really uncomfortable having a very, very high physical TBR, so I don't like buying books if I know I'm not gonna read it for a very, very long time. The only exception might be for a special edition book, and if I am getting a special edition book, it's probably because I'm gonna read it pretty soon and I really wanna read this story. That all changed after I heard him chat about the book. I have heard other people review this book before and a main critique I saw online was that Adam Silvera doesn't talk about how Deathcast, the app in this world, knows how people are going to die. Adam Silvera doesn't explore the science in this book with his readers and that really bothered a lot of readers. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if that would bother me too. It sounds like it's a really big issue because it's something I keep hearing over and over so I'm just not gonna put it at the top of my list. I thought Adam Silvera was absolutely amazing and just crushes his author events. There have been moments in the past where I meet or go to an author event and while they're still an incredible author and writer, they're not really a great presenter or great at answering questions or great at engaging with the audience. Adam Silvera was so funny, so real, unapologetically himself and he answered so many questions and really dove in deep. A big big question that he brought up on his own was like a lot of people get really upset with me for not explaining death cast and in the prequel you do get to meet the creator of death cast and you get to go inside his center and why he made it and a little bit more into the creation of the app but you still don't know how death cast knows you don't know the formula you don't know what really goes on or how he developed this in total he let us know that he's not sorry about that and that won't change he let us know that the stories he tells in both of these books are more important than how death cast functions that's not the point of the story and it actually reminded me of maggie steifotter who said when you really entertain and make your readers or your audience feel, they tend to forget how these things can even happen. And she actually used Fast and Furious, the movies, as a prime example of this because they defy laws of gravity and just physics in general, but people keep going back and they freaking love watching these scenes. So when Adam said that, it immediately brought me to what Maggie Scheifotter said of, it doesn't matter how it works or doesn't work. If you're really telling a story well and entertaining and captivating your audience, it doesn't matter. I really liked his answer. The more he talked about Death Cast and the reason he wrote these books, the more he actually convinced me by the end of his chat to purchase them and try it out. They Both Die at the End focuses on Mateo and Rufus, who are 
are both 19 years old and get a call from DeathCast. The whole point of them calling you and you signing up for this app is that you can make sure you have your affairs in order and you don't die with the regrets. There are characters in this book that don't want to know when they're going to die. There are other crazy apps that are developed in this world that feel so realistic that you really feel like would happen in our modern world if DeathCast existed. It also changes the way hospitals run. It changes the way traveling is done. I think Adam Silvera does a really great job of making this world seem so real. It is set in New York City on a different timeline, but still our world. And he really answers a lot of questions of how people would react to this because not everyone is open to death cast. In the first book, there is another app called The Last Friend App, where two Deckers or a non-Decker and a Decker can actually meet and become friends for their final day. And this is how Mateo and Rufus meet. Some people say it is a little insta-love because in a single day, they fall in love. I think it's because they really do feel that it's their last day and they have up to 24 hours to make the changes they need before they pass away. This book is told from multiple perspectives and I'll get into what Adam Silvera had to say about that in a little bit. Mainly Mateo and Rufus but also friends and family of their loved ones and enemies that they make throughout the book. I'd also like to note that in They Both Die at the End, Mateo's dad is in a coma and that's the number one worry he has. He wishes his dad would wake up to say goodbye to Mateo, but Mateo knows that's just not going to happen. The first to die at the end is the prequel and I loved it so much more than the first book. It focuses on Valentino and Orion who are living in a timeline where Deathcast is first launched. While Mateo and Rufus have lived with Deathcast for a good few years now, Valentino and Orion have never had Deathcast in their lives. Lives. Orion really wants to sign up for death cast because he has a heart disorder and he doesn't know if he's gonna live another day so instead of waiting around hoping he can finally get a heart transplant he decides to sign up for death cast so that if he doesn't receive that call at 12 a.m. on that day he knows he can go out and adventure and he won't die from his heart failing Valentino just moved from Arizona and he wants to start his new life in New York he wants to make it as a model and has a twin sister Scarlett when Valentino came out to his family they shunned him and shamed him. That really forced him to leave his family behind and move with Scarlett to New York City. He's the first to land, waiting for Scarlett to finish photographing a death cast launch party. He does not plan to sign up for death cast until he meets Orion. They hit it off and his story convinces Valentino to sign up for death cast. In the very first phone call made by the creator of death cast himself, Joaquin Rosa, is received by Valentino. Both of these books are incredible and they're actually very different tales. Adam Silvera was very blunt in his talk and said he doesn't like when authors just kind of write the same story over and over. So while it's still set up in this world where death casts exist, he makes sure that Orion and Valentino have a different story than Mateo and Rufus. And I can say with certainty that they definitely do. I felt so differently in the prequel than in the first book. I sobbed a lot harder in the prequel than the first book. I feel like he really did stamp those themes of premature death and what would you you do in your last day if you got a call from death cast adam silvera also doesn't like reading books where we are traveling with the mcs and don't know what's going on with the other characters until they have to meet and drive the plot forward and i totally understand what he means sometimes it just really doesn't work so that's why he gives us multiple perspectives so we can follow all of these threads along in the book and when they all come together or when one person's decision affects the other person we can see how that happened and i absolutely love that because i'm all about world building and expanding the author's creation and he definitely does an amazing job at both. The more Aiden Thomas asked him questions like why did he write this and what does he have to say to those critiques of not explaining how death cast works the more he convinced me to finally pick this book up. A top question he gets asked and you can tell that Aiden and Adam are friends so they were kind of teasing at this question but also answered it and explored it anyway. It's like why does he have a fixation with death? Is he just super dark and likes seeing all his characters die and his answer was just no that he really wants readers to reflect on their lives every single day and see if this is really how they want to spend their time is there something you want to do that you haven't done is there something you can do to change your circumstance are you fighting with someone and is that how you want to leave things if you were to die 
he often thinks about that last question when he's arguing with a friend and tends to go back and apologize so that he quote unquote doesn't just walk out the door get hit by a piano and like things were left the way they were his inspiration for the first to die at the end actually came from his beloved uncle dying at a very young age in an accident it was the first time he was exposed to that premature death thinking everything is fine you can just travel and move and plan your life but things might go wrong and you might lose your life anyway for a while in his childhood his mom also had a heart condition like orion does and as a kid he kept wishing there was a way to know if that was going to be his mom's final day. In the prequel, Orion finally gets an app to let him know if he's going to die that day and if not, it means he can freely live his life without worrying that his heart is going to get too crazy and kill him. I was really wondering if they both do indeed die at the end and they do. And Adam actually talked about this in his interview as well saying that a lot of people get so upset when Mateo and Rufus actually die and and he's like, it's in the title. I'm not, I'm not giving them a cheap cop out. He said if he did give them a cheap cop out to live at the end of the book, it would really take away from all the themes and experiences they had, on, which makes sense. And I know a lot of people have a hard time seeing the way the characters change in such a short amount of time. I think that's a little bit of a bogus critique because even when a person experiences a near death experience, it changes them so much. So if you were to get this phone call and you're 19 years old, there's there's just a lot of ways you could react and change and shift things if you are guaranteed that is your final day. I had no issues with everything Mateo and Rufus did in this one day or even everything Valentino was questioning about his life and the way he left things with his parents. So of course before I left the event I got the first to die at the end and they both die at the end. I really loved both books and the prequel actually made Adam Silvera one of my top favorite authors. It's pretty funny looking back at this event that I attended and ended up loving Adam Silvera's way of thinking and bluntness and honesty so much. And now looking back, I'm like, that's so cool that I got to see one of my favorite authors chat even before he became my favorite author. I think I mentioned in another video that the first to die at the end made me sob a lot harder because it reminded me of a friend I lost when I was 19, just prematurely. And it really got me thinking how our world would be different if we did have something like Deathcast. I I still think it's pretty creepy to think about. I don't know if I would personally sign up for Deathcast. It does make me think of families losing a close loved one and how a phone call could change the way we experience loss, which this book in particular explores a lot. What's cute is that in the prequel, you also get to see cameos from Mateo and Rufus when they're little. And it just broke my heart even more because as readers, you know they're gonna die at 19. But in this book, you get to see them as little kids and see their families because by the time you read they both die at the end you actually get to see where they're at in their lives and what happened to their family dynamics but here it's still pretty early and when Rufus and Mateo are in a very different place in their lives as little ones versus 19 year olds in the first to die at the end. I still highly recommend you read they both die at the end before you read the prequel that way you can get hit with all the feels to the full capacity and both of these books I have a song attached to them. It's really fun to listen to while reading certain chapters. American Pie is connected to They Both Die at the End. If you want the song for The First to Die at the End, feel free to DM me. Adam Silvera did not write this in his book. He actually wrote it in the back of my book as a little surprise because he let us know that if he wrote it in the book, it would completely spoil the ending for us and he didn't want to do that. But if we really wanted to know the song, he would let us know. And after I finished The First to Die at the End, I was sobbing. I saw even harder listening to the song. And this book, The Collector's Edition, actually has a short story on Mateo's dad. It's called The Father Does Not Die at the End. And I can't wait to read it. I know I'm gonna cry. I already feel emotional because I can't imagine how his dad feels, but I'm so glad that Adam decided to write a story and let us know because I just wanna keep knowing about worlds I love and the more authors write, kind of like Adrian Young did with the Narrows and wrote Saints prequel, the more I fall in love with the world and the more I fall in love with the author. So thanks for watching. If you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe, like, and comment if you're enjoying all this content and I will see you in the next video. Bye.